There's a difference between acquiring and issuing. It's not traditionally that most platforms are on both sides of the equation. Typically, you're an issuer or you're an acquirer, but the way that we built out our platform is that we're able to participate in both sides of this platform. So we actually issue credit cards, real credit cards. Those can be utilized on media campaigns, um, outside vendor payments, um, being able to float payments um, for goods um, and be able to get interchange back and drive bottom line growth that way as well. Because with our system in its complete version, if you're utilizing all of its aspects, you can get up to about 10% back, but just on virtual cards alone, you can get up to about two, two and a half percent back to your bottom line. Welcome to the Robust Marketer live from the Facebook Ad Buyers Group. Shout out to Tim Bird and his amazing Ad Leaks crew. Uh, again, I am here with a good friend of mine, Chase Harmer, CEO and founder of Pay Certified. Now, Chase has signed on to every uh, iStack event he's been able to. He's been ama an amazing patron. Uh, and supporter of what we're trying to do with ISAC training. Uh, so I am proud to have him on here. He's also, as someone in the payment and banking side of e-commerce and affiliate marketing, he's tied in on such an integral level to so many interesting trends in the world. So he's always filled with good insights. He's got his own podcast that has a huge uh, follow following as well. And he's a heck of a guy. Welcome to the program, Chase Harmer. How you doing? Thanks, Eric. Glad, happy to be here, man. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's it's always great. So I think if, if you guys know Chase, shout out in the in the group below. If you have any questions about payments or banking as we go through this, make sure that you take advantage of this live opportunity. Uh, Chase is one of those guys. Like I'm so lucky with the sponsors of our events. A that they're just awesome people that I love hanging out with, and B their offers are just so absolutely essential to our audience and hugely can be game changing changing for a lot of people. So Chase, just because we have a lot of new listeners potentially today, why don't sure. you start off again telling us who you are and what uh, what Pay Certify is? Sure, absolutely. Well, just taking a step back, I've been in payments since I was uh, 19 years old. Um, so we've since been a processor, core capabilities is core functionality of what we've been doing for a long time. Um, in 2014, we started building out Pay Certify, the ecosystem that is now, what is Pay Certify? And we essentially capture everything front to back uh, from payments, uh, acquisition, acquiring, issuing, fraud prevention, um, as well as insurance all through the platform. Um, so it's all done through two lines of code. And so anybody that wants to uh, process payments inside of the e-commerce space or travel or some other spaces that a lot of our affiliates out here are supporting as well, uh, we're happy to do that and uh, can do that in a very, uh, very efficient and seamless way. So. And so what's your niche versus someone like versus, you know, a big player like Stripe or PayPal? Like what what are you offering in what you're doing to eat their cheese? Well, I think that, you know, Stripe obviously is a great company. They're big, uh, but there's also a lot of affiliates and people that are going to be attending in the audience in Barcelona specifically that are drop shippers or ship products um, that uh, essentially may take longer than Amazon can deliver in, um, which ultimately is a model that Shopify and Stripe are going away from. So we actually are glad. To take all that business, in fact, it's a big part of our business. Uh, we specialize in e-commerce, travel, and healthcare. Um, e-commerce specifically uh, covers a lot of ground. Uh, there's a lot of high-risk verticals, low-risk verticals, and things in between. Uh, but essentially, that's where we live and breathe um, the majority of the time. Uh, merchants that are processing anywhere from uh, 50000 or less all the way up to millions of dollars a month, kind of our sweet spot. And obviously, we have much bigger clients as well, but uh, our sweet spot's probably 250 to $2 million or so. Nice. So, yeah. Okay, so we'll get more into the, the the awesome things you're bringing to the table with Pay Certify in Barcelona. But let's yeah. talk a little bit about trends in e-commerce. You're someone that works with hundreds or thousands potentially of of different e-com clients across yeah. the space. What are some of the biggest trends you're seeing in e-commerce right now? Um, well, as far as e-commerce is concerned, we're seeing a lot of personalization. Um, you know, I, I made a comment. Uh, you know, it's funny because personalization. A lot of people are talking about it, but being customized helps sell sell products, move products. Uh, but I make an example always of like the porn industry, like how porn was actually, you know, everybody was buying it. You can get it anywhere, but it all costs money and it was very easy to get. Now the only thing you can buy porn is, is like very specialized niche type products. And then the rest is just advertising. So I think even in today's environment, whether you're selling, uh, you know, crests or toothpaste or you're selling uh, some sort of men's product or women's product, it's gotta be more personalized and customized 
for your audience so you can sell and move more of it. So I see a lot of personalization. Um, but from a payments perspective, um, I see the use of virtual cards being a huge part of everyday situations and everyday ways that our merchants can make money and merchants in general that are processing payments online or taking payments online in any aspect, whether that's ACH or wires or, or credit cards are able to utilize these virtual cards and grow their bottom line numbers um, in a very strategic way. And we're seeing a lot of that. And there's a lot of other things that I can discuss, but I'm happy to discuss whatever it is that you guys are interested in too. Well, let's get back to porn. Uh, <laughs> first of all. Everyone loves porn. So. Yeah, no, I, I put it into the title of the episode because, you know, obviously anyone who's been in this industry knows that the uh, that the porn is always like a bellwether. Like it's always uh, generate both generating new technologies like yeah. PayPal, for instance, and, you know, all, all these other things. Like talk a little bit more about that because uh, obviously pers- I want to get into personalization after because that's a big word. And, and it's it's basically like it's a lot of different things to a lot of different people. It's here. It's sure. interesting to hear it put like that from your perspective. But well, porn, I'm sure, has been a part of your world in one well, way or another for a while. If you actually, there's a there's a movie called uh, The Middleman. Um, that's yep. actually how credit cards was started, was actually in the adult in the adult industry. So people started finding a way to discreetly try to pay money to acquire things online, uh, which back then was like, you know, it, it's, today it's, it's a much bigger world, obviously, but they would, this was like the, the start of how credit cards started. So um, yeah, in terms of it being a bellwether, they kind of are on the front front edge of how things go. Um, but in terms of what customization means to us, on the payment side, because everybody is really trying to b- deliver a customized experience for the consumer that they're trying to bring to the table and buy products, we need to also customize our platforms to support the merchants that are trying to sell these products. So we're trying to make it as a seamless experience as possible to deliver um, ultimately more bottom line revenue to the merchants that we support. So on our side, we're willing to customize um, and deliver a solution that's scalable and personalized to the merchants that we support. And that's part of our ecosystem and part of what I'm seeing transition just in the consumer side, the B2C side as well, is the same exact things, um, which obviously help everybody grow. Yeah, and so personalization from the brand, like it. it I, I just was thinking about when you talk about. Let's go back to the porn example. There's all these different niche things you're going to. You feel like you're catered to when you right. go to these different places, and then that can on the e-commerce side that can be accomplished with as with something as simple as a brand, as a good brand that feels like it's speaking to you. Mm-hmm. Like that's how you're going to win sales. And then beyond things like just creating a good customer experience, a good brand experience, people are experimenting with all sorts of different kinds of dynamic content. And sure. uh, you mentioned a little bit about that in your notes as well, a little bit like, what are you seeing? Are people actually using AI at this point to generate relevant sales experiences? Yeah. So one of the things that I was talking about, and I'll give a shout out to my boy, uh, Randall Crowder uh, from Funware, but a lot of the stuff that they're doing is essentially you know customizing uh, consumer experiences so that way retailers can better proactively market to them and give them what they want because ultimately me and you are on Facebook we're on Instagram we're on all these places and we're buyers right we just want to see the right ad so I can buy the shit that I want so you know ultimately it's feeding the right content um, utilizing artificial intelligence to deliver that content because we know so much about consumers now even inside of our system we can see the last 10 transactions that a consumer made, and I got all the information about all their social media profiles, everything about this person when they come through our system, if they have some of these fraud tools turned on. So there's a lot of information, scary information, that we have about consumers when they come through the, come through the system. But if you utilize that information to better service the customers that you support, you really can grow your bottom line revenue and ultimately scale the business in a way that other retailers can't. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit back to virtual cards then, because I know this was a part of where the, your service comes in and some of its real like additional value kicks up. Sure. So talk, go, go back to that topic a little bit and dive in there. Sure. Well, there's a lot of different ways that virtual cards can be utilized, but essentially virtual cards in general um, are a way for our retailers to make additional bottom line profit. Um, there's a difference between acquiring and issuing. So if you, it's not traditionally that most platforms are on both sides of the equation. Typically, you're an issuer or you're an acquirer, but the way that we built out our platform is that we're able to participate in both sides of this uh, this platform. So we actually issue credit cards, real credit cards. Those can be utilized on media campaigns, um, outside vendor payments, um, being able to float payments um, for goods um, and be able to get interchange back and, bottom, and drive bottom line growth that way as well because you can get up to about 
with our system in its complete version, if you're utilizing all of its aspects, you can get up to about 10% back. But just on virtual cloud cards alone, you can get up to about 2 2.5% back to your bottom line, which uh, ultimately, if you're utilizing them effectively um, and understand how to utilize them, and it's probably more of a, it's a deeper conversation, a deeper dive into how virtual cards work um, in a general sense in the e-commerce world. But um, there's a lot that you can do if you're processing payments and you're selling tangible products online. Digital products, you probably don't have as much of a use for it unless you're buying media mm -hmm. um, for it um, or something digital. But if you're a tangible um, online advertiser and you're selling products that uh, essentially are physical goods, there's a multiple different ways that you can utilize virtual cards to make additional revenue for your business. But it's all part of the platform. And essentially, in order to do that, you essentially have to be registered with banks, typically, in order to uh, generate interchange, real interchange that can be profitable to your bottom line. So through our platform, there's no outside integrations, there's no outside bank relationships, there's no reserves that you have to put up to earn the additional interchange. You just earn it automatically um, every month between the 15th and the 20th. Amazing. So, and this because you've built this whole, like you say, whole ecosystem where mm -hmm. you have a, a network of bankers essentially who you've built up enough of a relationship with, have done enough quality business with as an organization that they're able to just kind of live in your in your ecosystem. That's pretty cool. What did you have to do with all those bankers, Chase? Uh, put up a lot of capital. Um, but yeah. also put up a lot of capital because you have to aggregate capital in order to basically push and float capital through. So. It's a very financial, uh, financially intensive project, um, and you just have to work with the right banks that are going to allow you to earn interchange and maximize your profit on the back end as we grow. Uh, so it's a process, um, you know, definitely a process that took a long time. But the the intrinsical, like how the inner workings uh, work and manifest itself in your environment, is what really makes the magic happen. Very cool. Uh, and so, how has how has your business grown over the past couple of years as more and more people are flooding into e-commerce, into drop shipping, into everything? Like what, what's, what's it been like at Pay Certify? Well, so back, if we rewind back to December, we had about 27 employees and now we have close to 90. So, uh, you know, like literally like five minutes later. So we, we were able to essentially, we bootstrapped the whole entire technology up until, um, 2018 and then we got a, a large capital investment which allows us to grow our employee base and really push out product faster the biggest thing about building products is time time is the biggest uh, it, it's really the biggest uh, component of being successful and being able to push out successful products uh, to make money um, and you know that all costs a lot of money to do so uh, we've just we're in super growth mode right now super uh, acquisition mode I'll give a shout out to Jordan Menard. He's doing some of our ad buying now. So uh, if he's watching this, but uh, no pressure, Jordan. But uh, <laughs> it's like one big happy family here, right? Yeah. It's amazing the way things snowball <laughs> people you meet at the iStack events. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nice. So there's a lot so of really good people at iStack. That's why I love love going there too. So that's why you gotta join us. That's why Chase is gonna be there. Uh, illuminating, going deeper on all of these topics along with 14 other presenters, Barcelona, Spain, iStack, uh, dot link slash, it's actually ad buyers. It's not ad leaks. It's confusing because the promo code is ad leaks, but it's slash ad buyers. If you go to the, our Barcelona page, you want to grab your tickets. They're flying off the shelf. We had 10 tickets last night sell on our last deadline. Uh, and they are, we're trending hopefully towards 400, which would be uh, a, a record for us, which we're really jacked up about. Uh, so yeah, come, come see us there, everyone. Uh, you will not be disappointed. I wanted to go back to, uh, personalization and the affiliate experience. This is something I, I've been in the affiliate game since, uh, 2007 with Neverblue, and I was running toolbars and funware. I was running on funware. So like, I'm very familiar with, with like that ecosystem as well. Sure. It's this idea of personalization is something that affiliates sort of deliver by their nature, right? Because they're out there outsourcing angles. Uh, and delivering personalized like advertising experiences and then sending sure. it to the uh, like what are you seeing in the affiliate marketing space these days? Well, uh, I mean we work with a lot of affiliates that push us traffic and for some of the other offers that we have as well but I mean what we're seeing is you know they're cre creative people by nature because they have to drive traffic but um, you know being not real I'm not really an affiliate so you know I can't really speak yeah. too much to what exactly they're doing there but I do see that personalization is a big part of it. Uh, you know, if you have a standard product, 
um, you can create additional products that are geared towards the consumers that you're selling to just based upon the first product that they're buying and then customize and personalize additional products that you can upsell to them. And I see a lot of that more on the upsell side of things um, outside of, and it's once they're inside the funnels, that's what I'm seeing on our side. So got it. Mm -hmm. That's a good tip for sure. Uh, the other thing you mentioned, which I've heard more and more people talking about is B2B and the B2B business. It's like, it's like the sort of direct to consumer mentality has now gone into B2B and really like opened up that space for, uh, for these more sort of like, as you say, personalized experiences. Is that what you, would you agree with that? Well, yeah, I mean, the B2B market, um, especially in vir virtual cards too, um, that's a huge, huge uh, platform. So we're seeing inside of the healthcare space, these guys are making vendor payments weekly of millions and millions of dollars a month. That's all being utilized um, through virtual cards. But B2B specifically is exploding. Um, you know, inside of the payment space landscape online, uh, it wasn't, it mostly B2B in the past was all like ACH and wires, but now, all these old antiquated systems are being revamped and new technology is coming in, um, you know, on the banking side, on the B2B side, and they're really taking over what we are seeing um, in payments today. I mean, the, the space is completely disruptive um, from where it used to be. So that's interesting. Yeah. I've heard, yeah but I know Joe DeRosa uh, has been talking a lot about, uh, about local stuff or sort of B2B stuff as well. I think, yeah. uh, I think it is a massive opportunity. What about CBD? What's, what's the newest, I'm sort of, uh, in, in, into some, some CBD and, and sort of cannabis related ventures that I'm really excited about. Uh, what are you seeing in, in, in that space? Well, the space is super tight right now. So, uh, in the banking space, we have, obviously we have banks that we work with directly through our platform. We're able to facilitate it, but what we're doing, we're, what we are seeing is that the guys that are smaller, are getting squeezed out of the marketplace. So unless you have a big, uh, if you ha unless you have the ability to scale your brand quickly, um, with a with a plan and financials to do that, or if you're currently processing a good amount of volume already, it's kind of hard to get into the space right now. Um, there's just not a lot of banks that want to participate with guys that are doing less than like three hundred thousand a month. That's what we're seeing. Um, but we have some of the biggest guys in the space running on our platform. Uh, very successfully. So if, if there are guys out there that are looking to scale, maybe haven't started a CBD company yet, but have financials to support it, we can definitely work with. Them. And so you're talking about sort of consolidation. It's like every new industry, every new opportunity that comes together, every new affiliate, you know, hack or whatever, it's like everything just consolidates quicker now. Uh, sure. And, and you know, those, those, those loops of opportunity get a little bit shorter. Uh, but it's also happening in the payment space. You mentioned that a lot of big players are consolidating, and are they essentially doing that in an effort to sort of replicate the the, the sort of like whole environment system that you've created? Um, well, actually, so there's dinosaurs inside of our space, and these are the guys that are consolidating. So if you look at like Pfizer was a gigantic uh, company that just bought First Data, and then Global just bought Tesis. Um, the, the consolidation is happening all the time. So companies like ours, they're when you're so big like a First Data, it's almost impossible to move and develop and be uh, responsive enough to what's happening in the marketplace. So companies like ours are building technology and then we essentially eventually get acquired by companies in the space like that. Obviously that's our long-term play as well is to be acquired, uh, but ultimately facilitate all the e-commerce growth that you guys are, are doing uh, on a month to month basis now as well. So cool. So I'm, I'm interested in like what drew you like this is such an interesting space. You obviously have a like you're you have this, you know, a, a, an exit plan. But sure. what like what is your as an entrepreneur? Like what's your top skill? Like what sort of brought you into the space and has allowed you to be so successful in it? Balls? Um, yeah. Balls. <laughs> you gotta have balls. You know, I think the one cool thing about where we're at, what we built and if you build technology, if you're building technology in general, um, there's there's a high intensive you have to have a high threshold for pain, for, first of all, but you also have a high, it's a, it's, a, it's a higher barrier to entry. So you essentially have, there's capital that is required to build this shit, um, and you have to be able to fucking eat dog shit for years before you can actually scale. So if you're ready to eat dog shit for a while to make a big play in the end, that's really what you have to do to, in order to be able to survive in this business and grow. And I think any technology company, whether it's payments or you're building a brand and you're scaling something, um, you know, that technology behind it and all the stuff that you have to do to take it to scale is, is the most challenging part and capital intensive part, but it's why um, we're successful too, because getting to the pinnacle that we've got to allows us 
to be in a short short list of people, short list of companies that can do it. And yeah, like it, it, as far as other, t you have two aspects. You have the, the investment in technology, which is heavy, the investment in people, which is heavy when you're building technology. But you also have the other side of the collateral to sort of be at the table in this world, which is like right. another realm of pressure, I would imagine. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, being in this world takes, it takes a lot to do it. Uh, but I think having the right partnerships as well, just like in e-commerce, when you're scaling brands, you need the right fulfillment partners, you need the right drop shipping partners, you need the right advertising agencies or media internal media buying team. Um, same thing for our business. You know, you need all the right people. And when we first started scaling this brand back when 2014, it was just me and a few people. Um, it was a lot more about what I wanted, what we needed at that time to grow and scale. And so it took a lot to get to this point. Now we have a big team and it's more about the team being successful and us growing together um, as a unit. So. Amazing. Uh, okay, let's talk a little bit about what you're excited about in terms of pay certify in the future. I know you're always working on sort of new initiatives, new yeah. ways to open up credit to more people. What what do you have on the radar for the next uh, six months? Sure. Well, we essentially are releasing um, our pay pack on the 17th of June. So essentially, we'll be able to in deliver instantaneous mids to anybody that comes onto the platform within 10 minutes. Um, so we'll be able to scale those brands out that way. Um, essentially everything is combined into one ecosystem. So essentially everything that we do is done with the two lines of code, but the ability to scale out the virtual card platform is unparalleled um, to anything that's on the marketplace. And without the ability to put up a reserve, if you're doing $10 million a month or a million dollars a month at any scale, and you're looking to scale, as long as we're acquiring transactions on the front end of the platform, we don't require you to put up a reserve, which means that you can literally avoid putting up millions of dollars in capital, or hundreds of thousands of dollars in capital, and do it just because you're processing through our platform. So I think there's a lot of exciting things that we're doing, but we're releasing that on the 17th, so we're planning to come to Barcelona and give people the opportunity to sign up right on the spot in minutes um, for, for no cost at all. So uh, Unreal. Yeah, so we're excited about it. We're excited about it. Nice, so you can come to Barcelona, you can get a tan, and you can get a mid or two. That's right. That's right. So as long as you're not a terrorist, you're approved. Honestly, that's what it takes. We have a, a terrorist screening techniques that go into all of our ads. So if you're this much of a capitalist, you can't be a terrorist. I think that's uh, that's right. That's the way I'd say that. I want, so what else are you excited about this summer? I see your you got these, you, I see your, your boys in little league. I see is he is he a pitcher? What's what's his position? I actually so yeah, he was a pitcher and he ultimately shops shards up, but he just fractured his hand. So he uh, he went over the handlebars at a birthday party and so the all star season's over. But yeah, you know, just the dad trying to make things happen and uh, you know, trying to keep up with all you e commerce guys. Yeah. It's yeah tough man. Uh, well well we're gonna have a hell of a time keeping up with each other in uh, in Barcelona <laughs> right. July tenth. The out there, by the way. So if anyone wants you're to join that, you're going first. Yeah, you know. So my bass brother Jordan was supposed to come with me, but he flaked out. But I'm gonna go do the running the bulls. So as long as I don't die, I'll be speaking on the 11th and uh, dropping some knowledge there too. And if you're listening and you want to join, so I know there's a bunch of great people going to do the running the bulls. I heard it's like a, a really a unbelievable experience. I don't. How are you gonna get close to them? Or are you just gonna I keep your try. distance? You know, if you're too far in front, it's no fun. Like so, I want to get a little close, but like far enough where I can still. <laughs> Outrun that bull, like, you know. So it's like, yeah. I gotta also do. I gotta also go to the gym and get a little bit more in shape before I go out there. So I heard it's, it's an eight, it's like an eight hundred meter it's like eight hundred meter race. So okay, it's yeah. not that bad. Not what about uh, Ibiza? Are you gonna be coming to the Tim Bird retreat afterward? Of course. So I'm going to the uh, Tim Bird Bird retreat. I'll be out there hanging out with all you guys. So I'm super looking forward to that. That's gonna be a bunch of fun. Um, and just a really cool time to experience with like all these really cool guys that are, that are coming. So yeah, I'm it's going to be a blast. Uh, shout out to Tim bird. One more time. Shout out to ad leaks. If you're not on ad leaks, what are you doing with your life? He's just <laughs> rolled out some new changes to it, uh, to make it even a higher, uh, level community. You've got to actually do an application in order to get in, which is always good for funnels. I found for prestigious things. Uh, and, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be uh, in partnership with all you guys and we'll see you in Barcelona, man. Leave it for there today. You too, Eric. Thanks so much, bro. All right. Okay. Cheers. Bye.